Team, what the changes to ISO uh, 16949 might entail and the timeline for rollout of the updated 16949 standard were the topic of the article, ISO TS 16949 piles on the requirements this year by Chad Keimel. Chad is joining us via Skype to talk about these changes. Hi Chad, thanks for joining, uh, joining us this morning. Uh, hi, Dirk and Mike. How are you guys? Good. Hey, pretty good. Thanks, Chad. Hey, uh, before we get into this, um, for those who are not, don't work in the automotive industry and maybe aren't familiar with uh, ISO TS 16949, can you just briefly describe what that standard is? Dirk, I thought everybody knew <laughs> ISO TS 16949. All right, it, it used to be known as QS 9000 a while back. Simply said, TS 16949 are the requirements for the automotive supply base. Specifically, tier one automotive suppliers have to be ISO TS 16949 certified. And furthermore, if we said going inside, it is ISO 9001 plus additional requirements coming from a group of automotive OEMs known as the International Automotive Task Force. So TS 16949, is ISO 9001 plus additional requirements. And of course, if you want to be certified, you have to add still further requirements called customer specific requirements. And, and what's, what, what's your background in uh, ISO TS 16949? So, Dirk, interesting you ask because, um, you know, we happen to be headquartered in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Of course, we have global offices and we do stuff all over the U.S. But uh, being in Michigan, you know, many of us have started out, and, and Omnex started out in the automotive industry. So I myself helped write QS9000, the earlier version of TS16949 on the Ford Motor Company side. And uh, one of our principals, Dan Reed, was the writer of QS9000, TS16949 first edition, and he actually was a team leader for all the different core tools, APQP, FMEA, SPC, and so on. And we ourselves are on the writing committees of SPC, MSA, and FMEA. And I also helped write the semiconductor supplement to TS 16949, I'm sorry to go on, but I did the first worldwide witness audit for QS 9000. So lots and lots of, uh, in terms of background, in, in TS 16949. Okay, you know, in, in an earlier interview with you uh, a few weeks ago, we discussed ISO 9001-2015's impact on AS9100, which is another sector-specific uh, standard, that's for the aerospace, uh, the, that's the aerospace QMS standard. Uh, how much of an impact will the new ISO 9001-2015 have on ISO TS16949? Dirk, excellent question. You know, um, Many people, you know, in, in different industries think, I'll start with the risk. They think because they have product realization risk, they have the ISO 9001 2015 risk covered. And I'll just say simply, just looking at the interested party expectations, context, coming into planning, looking at planning risk, and then um, that part, that's a big part of the changes to ISO 9001 2015, is not covered, you know, in the earlier version of TS 16949. So definitely, people who implemented TS 16949 have that as a delta. Let's go to a small change. You know, if you've been following what I've been doing with ISO 9001 2015, you know, I have a new book out in terms of auditing ISO 9001 2015 with ASQ, I identified uh, 22 big and small requirements of ISO 9001 2015. So let me take a small requirement here. For, for example, well, well, this is a good one. You know, ISO 9001 never had managing the change. That change we had in spades in TS 16949. Well, there's a different one called organizational knowledge in ISO 9001 2015. That is a delta in TS 16949. I'll pick one more. 
you know, I'm, I've been telling everybody that the intent of the quality policy and the idea that it's overall, the overall policy can be aligned with the organization's vision and mission, making it sort of aligned with the business strategy is new. So, and that was not a requirement in TS 6949. So very quickly with you, I checked about three of them and only one of them was covered. So I'm going to say this out of the many different changes in ISO 9001 2015, my, you know, without going and doing every one of these, many of them, most of them will be a Delta by ISO TS 16949 or automotive suppliers. Now, Chad, I, we, we all know, I think, from, from experience, you certainly from hands-on experience, that uh, release dates of new standards are always somewhat moving targets. Um, but when, when is, uh, what's its current thinking now in terms of when the new version of, of ISO TS 16949 is going to be out? Great. I'll just say this, by the way, the deadline is not changing. So um, the IATF has informed all of us that the deadline remains ISO 9001, 2015's deadline, which means uh, September 14th, 2018, mm -hmm. right? Right. And um, what they've promised us is that it'll be out by the end of the year. I'm going to make a guess here that, you know, they're much further along. And I think the only thing that could be holding them up really is the, is the translations. So I'm, I'm uh, making a calculated bet that it's out you know, in October or early November. And, and you're saying, but you're saying that the, the, the deadline for actually, what, being, being audited uh, to, the, to the new version, would, would people would have to have that, that, that new uh, certification Let's by 2018? Up. Yeah. Okay. And All right. Been months and it, it big changes. All right. Well, you know, not only from 9001 2015, but also in TS 16949. Okay. And you know, we're going to be talking a lot more about mm -hmm. this uh, actually uh, next week. Yep. Uh, you're going to be uh, giving another one of your excellent webinars mm -hmm. on. on uh, ISO on, on, on an ISO standard, but this time it's going to be on ISO TS16949. If you haven't been to one of Chad's uh, webinars, uh, they are very informative. There's a lot of information in them, and obviously, if you are in the automotive industry, automotive supplier, then you're going to want to come to this uh, come to this webinar. Uh, Chad, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, guys. All right, uh, that was Chad Kimel, CTO and founder of Omnex Incorporated.